Hello and welcome everybody. Today we'll be going over a lot about in depth to prepare ourselves for the certification exam. And in this video, we will be discussing facades. If you've ever built a Laravel application, you have almost certainly already used a facade and possibly without knowing it. So what is a facade? Well, in literal terms, a facade is a front of a building, especially a large or attractive building. While this doesn't have anything to do with programming, it does give us two characteristics of facades, being that they are prominent and easy to use. This is useful when programming as it improves readability. They also act as a visible part of something deeper and more complex. Now in programming terms, a facade is a structural design pattern that provides an interface to the underlying system of classes in the application's service container. Like a building's facade, it is essentially the prominent face of an underlying structure that makes it easier to see. In this case, the structure is a system of classes. So how do facades work in Laravel? All of Laravel's facades can be found within the Illuminate Support Facades namespace in the Vendor Laravel Framework Source folder. In each of these files, you will notice two things. The first is a large doc block at the top listing out the methods that can be used on this facade as well as where the source code can be found. Here is the log facade. Uh, for example, keep in mind that the doc block doesn't actually do anything. Uh, so you can remove it if you really want to and it will keep working, but I wouldn't suggest that. So this is for your information and it makes it much easier to use uh, and debug later on. The second thing you should notice is that there is a single class that extends the facade interface and it contains the get facade accessor method, which in turn returns a string. The get facade accessor method can be found in the base facade. Here, the facade class first uses the call static magic method, which is triggered when invoking inaccessible methods in a static context. Here, the first thing that the method does is define the instance as the static output of the get facade root method. Looking at this method, it brings us back to our get facade accessor, uh, which we know will return the key from the original facade. In our case, this will be a log. It then returns the resolve facade instance static method on this string. Here, we are passing through our string log as the variable name. It is first checked to see if it is an object. Uh, if so, then it will simply return that object. Next, Laravel will look into the resolved instances to see if the variable has been previously resolved. If so, it will return this. And finally, if none of the above, then it will reach into the container and resolve the instance and then cache it for future use. So where does the code actually come from? Let's go back to our original facade and in the doc block, you will notice at C plus the location of the file. This file contains all the methods list in the doc block above. What the facade does is allow us to use a simple key to access all of this code. So that's all well and good, but how can I use facades in my projects? Well, let's take a look. In a fresh install of Laravel, open up to the routes web.php file. First, I want you to notice that we are using the route facade in this case, we are importing the fully qualified class name. We actually don't have to. If you look at the config app.php file, you'll see an array of aliases in there, and we actually have uh, the route file in there. So this will bring in the facade just by using uh, the alias instead. So we have a server going just to prove what works and what doesn't. So let's go ahead and remove that refresh, you can see we have the same thing. So here the alias allows us to forego uh, importing the fully qualified class name. Then instead of using the call static method within the base facade class, 
we can pull it out and use it here. You can see it gives us the same thing. So let's see what that call static method does. Coming back to it, we can see that it accepts the method and then an array of arguments as we have the spread operator right here. So those arguments are, well, the endpoint and the callback. So the endpoint here would be, well, just the uh, index and then the callback would return the view welcome. Now we can also use the app facade. Well, in this case, this is also the app alias, as we can see that we have the app alias here within the aliases uh, array. Remember that this is a facade for the application container inside of which is the router provider. Then we can also use the app helper function to do the exact same thing. Finally, we can also use the make method within the app helper function to call the router. So those are the different ways that you can use the facades if you know which methods you want to use. But what if you don't? Let's take a deeper look at the log facade in this example. As you recall, because the log has been aliased, we do not need to import it uh, here at the top as already in the container. So this will work. However, if you do import the facade, then you have access to not only the list of methods, but also hints about how to use each one. Note that I'm using VS Code with the extension of PHP IntelliFence. Okay, so let's import the facade at the top so that we get these hints. But maybe we aren't getting the full picture. How can we investigate this further? Well, let's go into the log facade to see which methods are available. As I mentioned earlier, this doc block can be quite useful. It gives me a quick list of which methods are available. Here, you can see that we have the alert, critical, and debug methods, and so on and so forth. Then, within each static method, we can see what parameters it accepts. The first, in this case, is the string, which will be our message, and the second is the array that gives us some sort of context. But if you're like me, you want to see the full function to see what is really going on under the hood. Let's go to illuminate log logger to find out. Here we can see that we're implementing the logger interface and the event dispatcher. If we go down, we can see which functions are available to us and what parameters are being passed to them. Looking at the alert method, for example, we can see that we need to pass it a message and then we have an optional parameter of context, uh, which must be an array. Then this calls the write log method which passes the function name, in this case alert, uh, as well as the message and context. This uses the protected logger interface and then passes the arguments to the fire log event method, which in turn uses the dispatcher to dispatch this message. If you wanted to look at the dispatcher more deeply, you could take a look here at illuminate contracts events dispatcher. But I'll stop here because I think you get the point. By following the code this way, you get a lot of benefits. This will help you resolve a lot of the issues that you will encounter. It will help you discover new functionalities that you may not have otherwise known about. And finally, it will help you learn the framework to a deeper extent. Let's now turn our attention to real-time facades, which were introduced in Laravel 5.4. Using real-time facades is a quick way of allowing any of your own classes to act like a facade, in that you can use static methods on them. Let's take a brief look at how we can use them. First, of course, you need a class to be able to use this with. I have created a simple class that shows the flying distance between two locations. In the distance class, we have a public function from Toronto Two, which has one parameter of city. In this method, I simply use the Haversin formula in which I set the first city as Toronto and you can see how far away another city is in kilometers. Now let's see how this works in the web router. Here we are seeing how far Vancouver is from Toronto. Notice how I am importing the distance class as normal creating a new instance of this class and then returning the from Toronto to method on that instance. And let's test this out in the browser. And we can see that Vancouver is 3,358 kilometers from Toronto. We can also test out Lisbon if we want to, and it is slightly more, well, 
with 5,700 kilometers away. In order to use a real-time facade here, all we have to do is prepend facades to the class. For example, instead of app slash distance, let's use facades slash app slash distance. Now we are free to use the static method that the facades affords us. We can take away the method up here, and then here we will return distance and use the static method right here from Toronto to. And as you can see, it still works. And even for Vancouver, it still works. So using the real-time facade, you can see that the syntax is slightly more terse and expressive. So how do real-time facades work? Well, it all starts out with the load method inside of alias loader, which can be found in the Illuminate Foundation namespace. I want you to note here that the static variable facade namespace is simply the string facades. Back to the load method, this method checks to see if the class that you have imported is prefixed with facades. If you have prefixed the class with facades, it then calls the load facade method. The load facade method in turn calls the ensure facade exists method. Here, the method checks to see if the facade has already been created and cached within the storage path. If so, it will return the cached version. If not, it will call the format facade stub in order to create, store, and cache the facade. The facade stub can be found in illuminate foundation stub facade.stub and looks like the following. The new facade is created inside of the storage path in the framework cache folder. You can see my previous example here of the distance class, which has now been cached. So that does it for today. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to write in the comments section below. And if you're planning on taking the certification exam, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks everybody.